West Bank's like very clicky. It's like got its own little community. Clicky in a way, but also friend friendly, you know. You can get it once you get over the initial who's that like, you know. When a majesty came to what on top, we had a wise in a brew down to his avenue. When a majesty came to what on top. They was always artists. Always. From the day I met them. I used to go to the play the guitar, or went round playing the guitar with them. Even before then, they were always drawing, always writing poetry. Well, I've never really studied music, so uh, I think it's above me, like, it's above, way above me. I think they were just naturally born artists, to be honest, and they'd have found if it weren't that, if they were born in the countryside, they'd probably write about beautiful things. I don't think they'll ever part. I don't think they'd ever break the relationship up. I always get frightened and thinking if anything ever happened to one, I wouldn't know how the other one had cope. The twins managed to deal with one subject, but between them, they are the ultimate clique. All right. All right. All right. You know, we've got this gig on Thursday. Yeah. Well, we need, we reckon we need this sofa for it. It's just for this oh, gig, one off, I mean, we'll get it back, be out wrong with it. Oh, well, so no, where are you taking that? So it's not us, sat on it. It'll be a favour, oh, big favour. Oh, no, he'll look good. Cool. When you're writing songs, you're, like, you're some sort of vampire in taking, like, the blood from your culture and it keeps you alive in these songs and you've got to keep, you got to find it from your own life. It's the right kind of settee. It's, it's, it's right, it's from West Bank. We need a West Bank settee. You'll never get it through the doors. You'll have to try and get it through the door. You're not going to land that door. Well, getting dock in your hand. You just use where you come from. It's the only thing you know. I mean, it's the only thing we can. You, you can only show your passion if you tell the truth of where you come from. Yeah, who's the furniture? That's what I said. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Is that because you know we can't get it out? They believe in it, and they they keep on doing it. So I've nothing but admiration for. Them. But you've never really seen them, have you? Only at my 50th birthday. Put a tape in the car. To get that on, we need to put it on one end to feed the back part of the door. Well, we'll, just head well, we've got to get a set E from somewhere. I mean, say our Dean doesn't give us in, what are we going to do then? I, mean, I, just, I just can't work out everyone's set E's, you just can't get them out. There's an abattoir there and everyone complains about this smell that goes across witness. And in some ways, your accent is is developed from a place. I mean, with the Brown Council of Elocution, we definitely we had a play on on the word um, the teaching now now Brown Cow. You know, this is how you speak properly, and we kind of used our environment and now the way we speak, and we said we'll celebrate our accent. Do we people come up to us and go, oh, your music sounds great now, but I'm a little bit worried about how much your accent comes through and that. But I find it a bit odd when there's people like Bob Marley and there was West Indian and he used their accent, yeah. and it sounded colourful. Well, Elvis had an accent, didn't he? The brown cows of elocution, the brown cows of... The brown cows of elocution, the brown... I mean, it feels great when you're doing a gig and some and the people around there are singing brown cow. Feels really good to say, yeah, we are champions together. Sure it's a gap, sure it's a gap, sure it's a gap. Sure it's a gap, sure it's a gap. Sure it's a gap, sure it's a gap. Sure it's a gap, sure There was a lot of Geordies there. There was a, a few people and they were singing songs. Rugby songs, football songs. And uh, we have a competition where one table sings and then you finish. The table sings better than you, so it's just like it runs on. So you have, you say in the end you say right, sing, sing, or show us your ring. So then they have to get up and they have to show you the ring, and that's that. We had replicas in the Eiffel Tower and an attic roof on the living room floor. So we just started singing matching houses, I think it was, or brown cows. Brown cows, it was. It's got up, sing our heads off. They'd done all their bit and they were crap. They were crap. They were singing rugby songs, football songs, and you just come out with brown cows. Only the lads that were with us knew exactly what we were about. 
and they all got up Everyone on the tables, in. dropped the strides, shown their asses, and were off. Because they were beaten. The walls were alive with lopsided matadors. Our out of focus friends from our beta would have killed for. Them to do it like because he's seen him at a party, and we were at a party, like, and uh, he said that'd be good that to have a dance and a gig. Like, we never had a clue. Our vowels were triangled by the cattle gas. Oh, you'll get, you'll get people laughing. The vowels are laugh because it's it's because of the age difference. Like, like at a gig, you'll have people. Um, jumping up and down and things like that. Oh, they're going to be dancing like, like old-fashioned style, like. It's a bit embarrassing, like, you know, you don't want your mum on dancing that bass gig and that, do you? Like, the lyrics, the lyrics, like, everybody thinks they're complicated, but when it, if you, if you, if you look at the lyrics and read them properly, like they don't, it's all common sense really with what's happened in their life. You know the way a mad teacher would be leaning on the table like that, and you'd see his fingers and knuckles, and I'd like I like looking at things like that, remembering it, or remembering someone's carpet, as if you're taking a photograph and you write words around it. There's a line in one of the songs, in it. It's a sporty thing. We're talking about um, getting a shower in school. And it, there's a line that yeah. goes, um, Coventry Blue. There's yeah. a line that says, my balls turn Coventry Blue. And the, the reason why is because I just remember this Coventry kit. This light blue Coventry kit was like in some the ways... The coldest like, colour, weren't the it? The coldest colour going. It was like a nerd's football kit as well. And to remember that kit and then use it to say, my balls turned to Coventry Blue. Is, is, it just expresses it. I mean, there might be times where um, our Carl's not with me and he'll come back and say, I've got this line. I could start writing it and then, you know, fall asleep in a settee and he'd finish it off. I used to be a bit of a bully, you know, like bully this wins and all that, CS and all that. It was just like the way it was, you know, like skinheads and all that. It had the reputation to keep. So it was just, you know, you'd go around fighting with different people and all that just to try and prove something. We weren't fighters, if you know what I mean. Not in, we couldn't fight on the streets and things like that. Couldn't. He, he, we didn't even um, help each other, you know what I mean? If someone was going to bully him, we, didn't, we did, couldn't even join in. Because my dad used to walk yeah, the stable. Well, it's got it's an, almost, he said, there's two of you. You've got an advantage you the one. over them all. But we, all, we both used to run it together, like. Just make sure we're not. Well, my dad, well, it's a lie, isn't it, when people say, if you hit someone back, they won't hit you again. Because if you hit someone back, you can't get rid of him. Can you swim? Well, swim in that, a double axle, triple, somersault, spick. Yeah, Brad, he, he was definitely Buck's corner, was his, with the other guys, like. While you're headlocked in a farting arm pit. Brad says to us that he was never a bully, but in a way, I think he was. I think he was more powerful in his words, you know, he could, he could use words. Words, like, words can be used to scare people. When we were kids, there was, like, a, a natural progression from ad adolescence to adulthood. The younger kids stood on the green box corner. And when you got older, you went to big, you went to box corner. And then gradually, you'd come into the pub. You'd fight. You'd fight to preserve your place in the, in the hierarchy, as, as it was. You'd fight. We we fought to take Box Corner off the old. For a bit, we avoided Box Corner. Yeah. Because there was there was all the lads there, and they'd, you know, and there was a certain amount of aggression, and, and and it was the territory, you know, it was where the cooler guys would be. All the punks would be on the corner, and that was that was terrifying because you had to come off the bridge and walk through West Bank, and that was right ahead of you, and you'd see there'd be about twenty of them all standing there. Wrestling with each other and smoking and spitting. I, I...
in our photo album, as we were. Yeah. And we've, we've known you, you've known us all our life, we've known you all our life. Yeah, been, taught, been through time, so yeah. would you get the photo album for that? Yeah, sound, yeah. You're ready then? So this, this is vital to us. Right. Do you remember actually hitting people on this corner? Remember any of it? I remember like Runcarnians, Runcarnians coming over and... Yeah. When we were skinheads, I think we got picked on and that and people coming through wanting to take us because we had skinheads and boots on and they thought, yeah, there's an hard bob, like, yeah, yeah. one of them, yeah. innit? The picture of Paul Dolan using Bucks Corner to represent the territory that people had, but it's the same kind of thing, do. it's better to get someone who had knowledge of what it was like on the street. Does that feel homely, that? <laughs> so I like, I like the idea of a dog because a, a dog like pisses in a spot as its territory and it goes back to it. So if you just, if you just kind of imagine like you're a dog, so if you lean on all fours, is that all right? Would you do that? You have a dog and you put a muzzle on it, you're constraining it. And I, I think that kind of says something about where you're from anyway. Saying there's a certain amount of constraints there. And if you're brought up in um, a place where, where there might be violence around you anyway, you, you could have violent tendons. I think I'd give them a bit more respect, yeah. I mean, I was just knocking about on the street corners and that, and they were starting bands. Oh, they were doing something. But I won, I was just hanging around all the time with the older lads. I found grace in the eyes of one punch goof that sounds you're blessed with a sabre tooth. Yeah, I think music oh. helped us get on the corner and say, because when we started to be in bands and that, then. You know, then people appreciated us a bit more. And that's when we kind got our power and became, had a voice. And we, in a way, became like the hard men, in a way, because we could use our voice. You, you might find this a bit odd, right? We do what's happening. Next door, we're doing a gig tonight. And we're, like, trying to set up a living room and stuff. But when we were coming here before, we noticed your washing line, and it just looks set out just yeah. perfect for the job. So it just goes behind and the it'll, band. And it'll tonight. dry quicker. And and we'll bring it back when it's dry. Do you reckon? It's dry. Seriously. We'll definitely bring it back straight as soon as the gig's finished. Can I go fast and you don't have to go slow? I don't like him sitting in the chair, what, reading, reading about football when I want him to come out and come on, we've got to hurry up and do something. I think he's more angry than me, I'm, I'm a bit more laid back about things. Probably hate everything about him <laughs> and love everything about him. Like there was a time when he'd be going out with his girlfriend all the time and saying, Gary, you know, we're missing out here, we've got to write some songs. I think it's uh, I think it's I think it's the hardest gig play in front of the people you've been brought up with. Because it's like it's like when you played football for the school. You were good every week until your dad turned up. Come on, coach! I reckon we'll get his hands in then. You can. Well, that is kind of there's the reputation, there's the tough guy, but we we put them on, that's kind of pacifies you. And that also it looks a bit more at your history just because of using skin and things and yeah. understanding what you went through, you know, with your warts. They give me a view of the world, you know. And, you know, have a bit of smoke and you know, things that things the pollution, things that never even opened my eyes to. He, he didn't always want to be tagged hard. It was as if it was a burden to him rape, sometimes. I mean, the one thing about Ray Pye, he was never a bully. Never a bully. He would just, always just stop cause fights. He, just because he, could, he, was, he, could, he was tough, it didn't mean that he wanted to hurt people. He, he, had, he, had, he had to be tough, because there was a time when he, did, he had a lot of warts. Yeah, there was hundreds. It worked out there was 557 
all together when they finally counted them. I mean, there were 27 warts on my little finger. They feel weird inside, Dan. Does that scare you, that? <laughs> I had all kinds of treatment for them, getting them cauterized. I used to get needles put in my hands for the, for, um, to freeze them, cut off with a scraper, a red pulp was sort of put in, burn the roots off. In the end, anyway, in the end, they got hypnotised. Then they went and took me in again and counted them again. And they had 204 after one week, which was a brilliant thing. They said um, they'd be left with one wart. One wart would probably never, ever go. And that's... Uh... <laughs> He, was, he wasn't very big lads, he was only small lads, he was very shy, very scary, a little bit nervy, easy to pick on. He used to always say that I was their cousin, and I then had to be sort of their protector, if you like, in school. <laughs> you know, they always come to me and I'd, he'd, he'd use me, but Ray Pye's my cousin, and he would be left alone a little bit. And I thought the chickens were quite good, for the obvious reason that a chicken is a word, that a chicken, you know, someone who's scared and that. And also, I like the idea of chickens being like the goose pimples Fit, on him. The idea yeah. that it was yeah. like his skin, it'd be shivering. And also, because it became the boxing glove, it yeah, was the fitting boxing. gloves as well. It could be the attacker. And the attack at the same time, and you were leaving that open. Once you create art and you put it on the paper, it doesn't belong to you anymore. And it belongs to the, the people to interpret it how they want. And, I mean, and it is so true, being an artist, you make an image, and then once you've done it, you put it on the paper, you know what your intentions are, and then people can interpret it how they like. They told me to look around and have a look at people. It's all the name Just of that. Just do your normal readings. Whatever that is, is it? I mean, the real motivation for it all is real life. There's a lot of things from me that we would use. I mean, there's, there, there was two guys that have been important that we didn't know too well but the guys name was sean and raffi and they were well known in witness of kind of graffiti and everywhere and the, the idea that the there was a relationship were so connected to each other there was like a male bonding no like that, that connection like that shot to sean and raffi like butch cassidy and the sundance kid and all them connections yeah like Thelma and Louise, it, go, it, do, it go, does that thing, the, the relationship between two people and how far they can go together. And the, it, it does go dark, doesn't it, with the, Sean and Raffi actually kill themselves in a car. And we can use the reference point in our song, saying we know where we are going under to, together in a gas-filled car. And we, that's it kind of pays tribute to their relationship together. And they must have been so brave and have so much kind of faith in each other as people to say we will go together. I think it's interesting that we only knew him by what the writing that was on the wall. And in a way, that's what we're kind of weird and people know us. The truth is, is when we're writing. We've always uh, attracted these, the outcast, the person that doesn't fit in, in some ways. We've always attracted them. I'm your greatest living fan, your punch bag, your Samaritan. You can ride my piggyback body to a sucker's baptism in the shagger's den. I, I, I think we've got this, these lines in a song that would sum up John Carr for me, and the lines are, it goes, pull the communication call, I'll strip tease through your telephone call, nobody knows who I really am, but oh, under my vest I'm a superman. I think that kind of, the question mark for John Carr, I think he, there is a question mark there, no one does know who he is. I'm not, I'm not sure if West Bank is different. I think the only thing that makes it appear different, I think when we're writing songs and that, we're kind of giving fine detail. Sound check for tonight went too well. well, too well. We usually have bad sound checks. Everything's bad, everything's exit. You'd have a good gig. And I'm a bit worried that it's going, when it's going, a, bit going a bit too smooth. i
mates were keen. Pussing and a bullet in a line called five to re-beat your average wicked step. I never touch my son and pay sandwiches. The Twins is a clique in uh, West Bank. Yeah, it's the ultimate. They are, they are the epitome of all that uh, community down there. And this is definitely for Sean and Matthew. Let's go. Um... It's an old dance now. You know, I think when we say that, we know where we're going. You know, we're going under together in a gas filled car. I think it's like saying that we will be together. We'll always be, yeah. I think we will do it together. Can't see how we can be separated. We know exactly where we are. We don't go together in a gas filled car. We know exactly. Really, I really believe there's places like this everywhere. We kind of try and focus on people. I think and you're we're learning. talking about domestic things as well, you know, people's living rooms and, you know, gossip and the rows that go on, you know, they like them to be gossipy songs. Make some room. We'll have some real dancing now. I think we're successful just because we've it's we're still doing what we do. Most people get older, staler as they go on, you know, it's, they seem to drop off. I think the success is that we are as young as when we started. Maybe that's the vampire in us. In a few moments, we continue our look at...